and and he said, you know, I, I think I could probably get you an audition. So that's what happened, is I walked oh. in, and just a table, not even of this quality, uh -huh. with Chris Sabat <laughs> and Justin Cook sitting at it, and it was an empty room. It felt a little sketchy. Really? In this yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it was like an empty room. There were boxes. It was not furnished. I mean, it was, it was just a you table like, and a lone whisper room sitting uh -huh. in the middle of it. Bowman with Anime Adventures and I'm with Kent Williams. I am about to moderate his panel. We're at the Plus Ultra Expo yep. and so of course I love you and so I'm excited <laughs> that I get to moderate your panel. All this excited this is gonna be yeah, fun. It will be fun. What's your favorite thing about doing panels? The one-on-one -on -one interaction with people. Oh. Absolutely for sure. I mean it's the one thing you don't get when you're in the have the group panels where you're competing with the other actors. <laughs> yeah. This is when it's just about me but that way I feel like I can uh, Bond? I mean, is that the wrong way to no, say it? But I love that. I mean, like yesterday, uh, I, I met some people who were from my hometown. Oh, from Cooper. No, from Laredo. Oh, from Laredo. Laredo Texas. I was thinking yeah. it was Cooper, Texas. No, that was one of them. That was one, that was of, one them. of them. Many of the little towns that I've lived okay, in. Okay, because I remember you said it was Cooper <laughs> and not Cooper. <laughs> That's right, Cooper. Yeah. Cooper. I'm saying yes. like Texan. <laughs> well, good. Well, I can't wait to see the panel to see who all is there. So I'm about to head in and introduce him, and then I'll see you in a minute. Okay. okay. Woo. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> hey, I'm Elise Bowman. I'm the voice of Pan on Dragon Ball GT, and I am also the host of Anime Adventures, which is a show that is all about anime. I interview anime voice actors and others in the anime world as I'm at conventions and recording studios. And today, I have the absolute pleasure of moderating a panel with Mr. Kent Williams. He is the voice of Mr. Compress on My Hero Academia. And we are here at the Plus Ultra Expo. I'm so excited that you are all here to see Kent. So let me get right to it and introduce Mr. Kent Williams. Woo! Good morning, you guys. So have a seat. I'm going to adjust the mic. You know, I've gotten to interview Kent on my show so you have to check that out and now I get to do a panel with you it's very exciting it's exciting yes and so I thought what we would do is start with a couple of questions that I have and then we'll open it up to you guys because I do know a little about you but let's talk my hero first okay and let's talk my, Mr. Compress let's hear Mr. Compress <laughs> <laughs> you know I had to start with that so are you guys all Mr. Compress fans? Yeah. Okay, because I see the com I see the outfits right there. But I mean, you realize that I do have other. There's other shows too, right? So I mean, like Dragon Ball Z, Yu Haku Show, repping a lot. So many. So many. Yes, so many. If you look at his list of characters, it's like <laughs> never ending. But let's hear Mr. Compress. Oh, Mr. Compress. Yes. All right. So Mr. Compress, he was really fun because he's so much. I, Alexis Tipton described him as very extra. I like <laughs> that new term. Yeah, because he's um, he's very theatrical, mm -hmm. which really pulls it out of me. You know, as a, as a stage performer. Well, you are a stage performer. <laughs> yes. He's a lot of fun to voice. He's a lot of fun to voice. Well, and I find what's interesting because you know in anime we talk about matching flaps all the time, and and that it's acting, but it is very technical. And with Mr. Compress, you do not have to match flaps. <laughs> that means, you know, it's, with that, it just means I've got a lot more freedom uh -huh. within the space of the line, you know, and there's, there's no even ma mask movement even to indicate that he's talking. So right now, it is a luxury. It is. <laughs> is that the first time that you've had that luxury in a character? I mean, uh, every character has moments where you don't have to match the flaps, where your mouth is off screen. But most you know, of the time, the good other uh, other guys that have been like inside like suits of armor, and you don't see the mouth or anything like that. But right. yeah, most of the time, I mean, it's the challenge of being able to make it sound like it's it was made for English. Yes, yes. So how fun has it been to be part of a show like My Hero? I mean, don't you just love? Well, the Mr. Show? Compress took a while to come around, so the show was yeah. already building in popularity. Had already been cast, so I mean. Those of us who were, you know, who did not make the casting originally, you know, were left thinking, you know, what's going to happen? Why? Yeah. You know, so it was a it was a huge thrill to have Colleen, you know, invite 
me to be a part of this cast. I mean, and I'm excited about this character. Yeah. I got really nervous in the explosion, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. You're always worried, is this the last time I'm coming in? Oh, no. But you, you made it. I made it. Yes. So uh, what I find a lot of people want to know, and I may be stealing some of your questions, but what do you think, why do people resonate with the show in general? I mean, I know you're a villain. Well, that's what's so interesting. Yeah. I mean, those of us who, who started with Funimation with the very first project, Dragon Ball Z, that has endured and endured and endured in a way that none of us really saw coming. You know, and then here comes this new show that's moving everything over. It's, uh, it's very different, you know, yeah. new audiences, uh, new fans coming in, and it's exciting that we can all still be a part of it. Yes, I absolutely. mean, my goodness, they, you know, we don't age out. I've seen some of the reveals of uh, Mr. Compress, and <laughs> he looks a little younger than me. Come on in, you guys. Come on in. Yes, sit I, under close. Sit it's close. An I understand there was some confusion on where the panel was actually going to be located. Yes. Uh, come right sit. on in. We have yes. ample seating. So glad you joined us. Plenty more fans and a hero. Yes. Yeah, I know there was a mix up on where the panel was actually going to be located. Glad you're here. So let's, I, I want to ask the question, how did you get started? So I know this because I've talked to you, but I still like to hear your story of how you got started in voice acting because I know that your parents had different plans <laughs> of what yeah. you were supposed to do. I was supposed to go into the military. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was going to go into uh, uh, medicine mm -hmm. until I got, uh, I got into a, a high school play, got a prize for it, and then that just kind of changed Change the, Changed yeah, the, the course. trajectory yeah, of yeah, your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I st <laughs> like most of the actors, I, I, I studied theater in school. I got, you know, uh, training in the basics. Uh -huh. So I studied through college, and I pursued a lot of um, stage stuff. But I was actually doing a stage play, and the reviewer, who gave me a really good view for the play, uh, by the way, said that he was doing this article on this company that was doing this show. It was Japanese. Um, he was calling it cartoons, of course. <laughs> and... Um, and, and he said, you know, I, I think I could probably get you an audition. So that's what happened, is I walked oh. in and just a table, not even of this quality, uh -huh. with Chris Savitt and Justin Cook sitting at it. And it was an empty room. It felt a little sketchy. Really? Yeah, yeah, because it was like an empty room. There were boxes. It was not furnished. I mean, it was, it was just a You're table like, What's and going a lone on here? whisper room sitting uh -huh. in the middle of it. So it seemed a little odd. And they were so young. These were like, you know, young college kids you know from UNT musicians so we, I wasn't sure what I was walking into but then I auditioned for uh, Dr. Giro, Andrew 20 uh -huh. and um, he was my first and got that and then it just kept tumbling on and on and on and on and Snowballed. on and on and on and on yeah that's crazy that's funny that you're like this is a little sketchy <laughs> that's what <laughs> it seemed at first but I mean you know we all know what happened you know with yeah. the course of history and it's crazy I mean gosh Funimation an empire now and it just started, yeah. All those people who started fresh, right, are so young and st stayed with it and have been able to see how it's grown here. And it's so good for this area. I mean, you know, Dallas is not just a place to be from. No. Oh, <laughs> it's a destination. It is a destination. <laughs> it is a destination. Yes. Well, I think what we'll do is open it up to questions, and then what I may do is, I think I can hear you guys, but I will repeat the question in case somebody doesn't. So, um, just- And thank you for being here, by yes, the way. Yes, thank you for being here. Sorry about the confusion on the room. So, just <laughs> we'll pretend we're in school and raise I know, our hands. These guys were here first. Yes, I mean, so these, you, yes, they you were, were the very the first here. ones. What's your question? Oh, that's such a good one, and he's a perfect guy. So what advice does he have for somebody starting in voiceover who wants you know, to be a voiceover actor? You know, the industry has definitely changed, you mm -hmm. know, here in uh, the Dallas area. You know, when I, my, my, my story, my entry story was unique. You know, I was already an actor in theater. I don't know what your story is, but I know now it is essential that you have a demo. You know, and then the that's basics is just like a one minute demo and it's maybe not what you think would be recorded like this is me doing you know some wild interesting voices that i like but what uh, what directors want to hear what casting directors want to hear is you in your vocal range in your age range doing a series of other things you know things you might see on tv commercials you know anywhere from car ads to fast food to i mean it's not necessarily just about uh anime characters 
that makes any sense. Well, and people have multiple demos. Multiple demos, yes. yeah, like a commercial demo, a narration demo, you know, like you would have for audio, an audio book demo, political demos. Anime There's so demo. many different kinds. Mm -hmm. Yes, anime demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a commercial that is my standard. <laughs> One Which, and done. Is it feasible to have, uh, to, to be able to say, I just want to do anime, I don't want to do commercials, I want to do anime? I think it's unrealistic, and I'll, you know, and I say that honestly. I mean, those of us who are recording at Funimation, we also get... The, um, the audition spots for, you know, product ads, you know, political spots. I mean, that's part of the, that's how you make a living out of it. Now, I, on the other hand, I work with a theater company, yes. so I'm, I'm deeply into the arts, but it isn't, the recording at Funimation is, is a part of my greater life, and, um, or even just broadcast and commercial work in general, uh, on camera, like, um, uh, a lot of the guys, you know, men and women that are here today, uh, I'm I'm a little bit off. I'm over here in uh, theater. I, I perform every weekend. The theater that I'm with, actually, they've got shows today. And talk about that. You've got really cool theater work that you do. Yeah. So if you don't know, I am a marionettist. I perform uh, a lot of string puppetry. Yes. Nice. <laughs> and it's so cool. Like if you check, what's your website? Oh, do a little plug. Theater.com. Yes, it is the neatest thing. Like, I think that's so unique. It's I'm very actually unique. going old to go world. see a show very soon. Oh, yeah, you're kicking it old school. Like, I love that. Because I think the only time I've really seen that is, um, oh, Julie Andrews. What's her, her old movie? <laughs> the Sound of Music. <laughs> yes. The Lonely Goat Herd. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that's the kind of the style that we use. But also, you know, we work in Scotland, so if you ever saw like Team America World Police, you know, <laughs> I mean, that is required viewing as a puppeteer. Oh yes. yeah, it's good to know. <laughs> Check that out before I come see you. Yeah. Did we answer your question? Okay. Yeah. And if you have follow-ups that you think of later, let us yeah. know. What's your question? Yes, so, that's pretty much all of it. Yeah, all of it. Um, do you actually go back and try to catch up or get something from the source material to, to create that character? Yes, but only if I have to, because most of the time the director's going to do that for you. Okay. You get fed a lot of backstory, a lot of information that really preps you. It's like going to school right before you record. It's a crash course. <laughs> yeah, which kind of brings up a question um, that I wanted to talk about, the role of a director in anime compared to the role of a director in some other work, like compared to theater directors or directors even in commercial voiceover work, because the role of a director in anime is a little different, and it's crucial. Do you want to touch on that oh a little gosh. bit? Oh, my gosh. I can imagine. I know what it's like to direct on stage, and that's challenging enough, but having to direct where you're working with only one character character voice at a time mm -hmm. and being able to have to keep up with track of layering those together so it sounds cohesive it sounds like these two characters are really you know working off one another yes now I have the unique experience of like I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm one of the first that gets booked oh, so, you are? Uh -huh. okay. so when I record I don't hear a lot of the other voices inside so I'm having to imagine that for me oh. so I get a lot of backstory all, all the way other actors they get to go in and they and you hear. get to yeah you get to play off of what you already hear Oh, interesting. So I rely on a director. <laughs> so much. Yes. yes that's interesting. You mm -hmm. really do have to rely on And Colleen on the is director. very good about that. Colleen, yes. She's great. Every actor she says that. Too. That she's so good. What else do we I saw. Yes. What's your question? Oh, the oh my funniest gosh. line he's ever um, done. Okay, that's okay, okay, so I haven't made an anime um, demo yet, but when I do... Oh, my goodness, you need there's one. There's one line. Do you know a show, um, Darker Than Black? Yes. Okay, and my <laughs> one of my favorite characters, Mao, you know, starts out as a cat in the first season, then becomes a, a mamanga, a little Japanese flying squirrel. But as the flying squirrel, he has a great line, and it's just, which one is up? Are both of them hot? Okay, and boom my favorite just to end like a nice little demo a little <laughs> oh, squirrel voice that'd be awesome and boom, and boom. i want to hear some more of him you did because i think you did some some line that was so great too on the interview oh man what was it i'll think of it later uh, yes sorry to put you on the spot i'll think of it in a minute so it's maybe it was funny to me <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has their thing. 
<laughs> what else do we have? What other questions? If not, I have more. Oh, there's oh, one. No, in fact, I was wondering what it was going to be like. And when we, they did the introduction panel yesterday, I was scanning it for, uh, you know, it's like, oh, Toga, 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 Toga. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I saw the one lone mask in the back. Oh, you did? Sans that was you? Oh, that was you. Oh, you guys should have taken a picture together. <laughs> Awesome. I had to I had to really check because I wanted to make sure it wasn't V. <laughs> Somebody with a face mask. What else? Yes. So we saw recently that Mr. Pumpress lost his arm. Do you think he transferred? But kept his life. Oh, Thankfully. so this may be a spoiler if you're watching it online. Yes. So she asked about him losing his arm. Going I'm to complain hoping about that it. he will complain about it the whole time. <laughs> that just adds so much richness right there. I mean, I mean, I can't imagine what that would be like. You know, there's, there's going to be some deficit to it, right? Some disadvantage. You have to complain. <laughs> <laughs> villain or no villain? Anyone. Would you complain? 100%. <laughs> yeah, what you got? <laughs> Most people say Supreme Kai. Oh, oh do course. they? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Uh, yes. Do you mind selling your soul with the proceeds? No, oh. not at all. I would love that. I'm yeah. super proud of them. Yeah, so you've my, got some great My characters. first character was Android 20, Dr. Zero. And at that time at Funimation, um, you know, there wasn't the huge cast. It, um, you know, it wasn't a gig that drew a lot of attention um, from, uh, from local actors. It was still such a new thing for actors to do and the thought of matching flaps. I mean, they're thinking of things like the old Kung Fu movies with, you know, the, <laughs> where they don't match whatsoever, you know? So that's what they were thinking originally. So, you know, I was lucky to get him first and then I got Mercenary Tao and then um, Supreme Kai, then Elder Kai, then Kabido Kai. And then there were other characters, you know, from the movies that came along like uh, Metamacha from Lord Slug, um, a little, uh, characters like Obacha Man, um, Turbo, oh, Turbo. Um, from uh, you know some of the smaller characters. So I mean, we were really lucky on that show because then by the next project, Yu Yu Hakusho, it kind of pared down and we got fewer. So yeah, so I got to. That's right. I know. I saw the reaction back there. Yes. I love that. Yes. Well, Face and tell the characters grasp. from you because you. Uh, were yes, I'm the narrator. So you know, today in the dark tournament, Yusuke Urameshi. You know, and then I got Chu from that, you know, the, the Aussie fighter. And then it was revealed that, you know, the blue ogre, you know, George sound to me, that was actually the narrator for the show. So it turned out to be three characters, was actually two. Well, but then I, I'm on future, then Fruits yeah. Basket, the next project, then it was just, you get one. <laughs> Hattori Soma. Yes. And that was when we started, that was back in the day when we didn't pronounce things the proper way. That's right, we've talked about that. Uh -huh. So talk about like how it was pronounced and how things are well, pronounced Well, that's different according, now. so you know the show, Fruits Basket, mm -hmm. okay. From which? I watched the older one, the 2001 one. Oh, you did? Yeah, Okay. I was in early high school, so that was like prime. Yeah, shh, don't, don't reveal yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the secret's <laughs> out. Yes. yes, yes, exactly. And that still happens now. We're like trying to say when I talked in like, you know, Shigure. Now, oops, it's Shigure now. Yeah, we have to remember how to pronounce. Ayame, not Ayame, you know. Yes. Akito, not Akito. I mean, we're, we can't pronounce them like Texans anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's hard. That's tricky. <laughs> now, I said, I know, you know, hard. Mao is pretty special, but I mean, Hattori is pretty special to me. That show is special to me, mainly because my son was on that show yeah. with me. Yeah, recording under uh, Avery Rice Williams. He's changed his name to Adam Rice. So, uh, but he was uh, the young version of Kyo, the cat, Jerry Jewell's character. Yeah, super proud. He doesn't sound like that anymore. He's almost 29, so. <laughs> and he's moved on from acting, mm -hmm. right? He started the same yes. time that Aaron Dismuk did. So mm -hmm. they were both like preteens. That, um, that started recording, you know, when it's usually women who record the young Boy characters. Voices. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. even, yeah. 
Now, and I see your question, but what I love to hear you say, hear did you Did I talk not about, answer? No, you did. Okay. No, I, uh, yeah, no, but back to your Dragon Ball characters, I love hearing you tell about talking to yourself. With oh, Supreme, yeah. yeah, I can super and Supreme Kind of Elder Kind. Yeah, no, Elder Kind. Perpetually talking to myself. And I record one, and then I luxuriate and go back and play off myself. Yes, yes. Let's hear those voices. Oh, Supreme Kind? Yes. Talking like that. And then Elder Kind <laughs> sliding in. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and you had another question. So, when you're cutting, we're doing this with the Supernatural um, perspective. Yeah. I got even more excited when I knew I got to keep my character. I mean, you could always be recast. I mean, he's 27. I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. I'm playing a character that's younger than my own child. That's really cool. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, I know. He is a doctor. <laughs> He's the adult in the room, so it works. <laughs> That's really cool, though. I know. This is educational for me. Well, what I thought was cool, too, he mentioned Turbo, which is this little baby. You know who that is. Well, because we talked about it. Okay. And in, the, in my interview, he tried to voice Turbo. And then we found the clip. You did not. We did. Oh, did yes. you really? Yes. And so he... I don't know if you can try to voice Turbo. Oh my gosh. Let's try see. <clears throat> Look, I can fix it myself, Daddy. I think it's somewhere like that. So that what's, hard. what is crazy, he was like, I know this doesn't sound like Turbo at all. We found the clip of Turbo. It sounds like that. It was so awesome. Like, wow. I loved it. I couldn't believe you matched, because you said that was a long, long time ago. Like that rocks. Okay, somebody else had a question. Yes. <laughs> no, I have not. And mainly because it's something that is actually asked of us not to do. Oh, I, I'm not sure what it is about separating the actor from, I, 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 it's controlling rights. I'm not sure. I mean, you can, when this has just come up because next week Funimation is sending uh, uh, several of us out for the movie premiere in LA. For yes, he was for rising, yes. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. So, you know, my son will be my plus one because he really? lives. Yes, I'm really excited about oh. getting to see him and get to be part of this movie premiere. And they've very specifically asked us not to do that very thing. I mean, because, yeah, do I want to go out and get my top hat? That would be amazing if you would. Could, if the voice actor changed it a ton. And there's always to add a little flavor. And then speaking as their characters, like everyone would love to. I think crazy. that's as far as we get to go is to actually use the voice. But yeah, there's a lot of rules that come. There's just a lot of rules that come with being a voice actor. <gasps> so many rules. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Like, you know, Disney boundaries. You're not allowed to actually dress in full costumes for Disney characters because, like, you know, they have the actual Disney characters there and they don't want, you know, these ramifications with, like, oh. Like, is it, does it all come back down to legalities? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Like, it's very modern, like just regular clothes, so it's not like a full cosplay, but it represents the character. So like I did ask, I said, well, what if I brought in a little trench, you know? A little trench. Yeah, it was belted, you know? Just happened to have a hat, a high hat. If it just happens to be part of your wardrobe. What, this face mask? That <laughs> I wear that in How theater. How similar is that? <laughs> Why not have them make the costumes for you? Like, them, it, it'd be sort of their... These are great write-in questions to the powers Ooh. that be. You know, because, you know, we don't, we don't get, we get to control nothing. We've got action items from the panel. <laughs> What's your question? Ooh, good one. I'm going to repeat it. What's your most physically exhausting character to voice? That's a good one. Because so many actors are so physical. The one that was most challenging was, do y'all know show Ace Attorney? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's And the yes. judge on that is just so vocally challenging to have to speak that way all the time. And where you have to place that in your, in your voice. So I, yeah, I had to, that one was tough. That does sound like a strain. Did you ever lose your voice doing that? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Did after you? the recession, it depends on how, you know, what your what your session length is, mm -hmm. you know, and how you just walked in feeling that day. So you have to watch it. We have funky weather here in Texas, you know. We get. <laughs> yes, we do. 
We get sick. I know, I, right? I know. It's cold, and then you're ready for a snow day, and now it's going to be in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, desert punk. Oh, how funny. I was just thinking of that the other day. Um, I remember, I, I, I want to say, was that the first one that Zach Bolton directed? I remember oh, when it? that came through. If I did, it must have been a bit. But I remember, you know, not getting cast on it. And <laughs> I'm like, why is that? It's supposed to. We get cast in everything that comes, right? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at that time, you know, there's a little luxury now. We'll flex that those of us who've been doing it for a while, we don't always audition. Now, I did audition for Mr. Compress. I had to, did you? I did have to audition, but I didn't have to go in. I got to send in an MP3, so I got to record at home like I like to do for all my auditions. So, you know, but it used to be that we had to come in with everybody else with the sides and, and look through and, re and record at least three auditions for three different characters. So that was um, what we were doing at that time. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it hurts when you don't get cast. <laughs> it does. So you have a home studio. Yes. And you do most of your mm -hmm, auditions, I mm -hmm. do as well. And I let Todd Haberkorn set it up for me. Oh, I am not a technical person. I pay for someone to change the oil in my car. I like I and Todd let somebody comes else. In, yes. Sets up your, yes. Use your friends. Use them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good thing to point out. Everything's changed so much. We used to go somewhere and audition. Now yes. everybody has home studios. So if well, you Well, and are, now the whole the whole um, voice audition you know, realm has opened up. Yes. Like, you know, lots of people can audition for the same things that it used to be, you would have to have an agent to get, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so if you are looking to get into voiceover, you can set up a home studio so Whereas inexpensively. we were competing with maybe 200 people, now we're competing with thousands. The world. Yeah. yes. I saw a hand go up somewhere, yes. Is there a character, an anime or not, um, that you personally would like to voice if for some reason Ooh, a character you'd like to voice. Ooh, oh, that's, that's such a Why did I question. think of everything that Chuck Huber has ever done? <laughs> I remember thinking about that, you know, in Soul Eater. It's like, how come he got that one? Maybe he should have been Sid and I should have been, you know, Stein. Like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, that feels that feels so nasty. Like, <laughs> think about it, but yeah, you know, we did sneak in there and take somebody else's work. But you know, it would that then that's that's like, you know, it's like Somebody like right now, David Wald, you know, curse David Wald, you know, because he's like taking a lot of the roles, slipping in from Houston sideways. Well, I did. Um, Let's say they retired I and have, moved to Hawaii. I have subbed in for Swayze before. Have you? Yeah. John Swayze. Yeah. Okay. But not like in the way that like Damon Mills can just oh, come step in, and in do. for Chris Ayers. Yeah. Yeah. Or Frieza, you know, I yeah. mean, like, wow. You, oh, yeah, yeah. Unnoticeable. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Good one. What else we got? <laughs> oh, your favorite anime character that you've I done. I bet a lot of people have answered that. With, you know, that's like picking your favorite child. <laughs> but, I mean, there are <laughs> def definite one. favorites, and they're favorites for, for different reasons. Uh, there's um, Shangri-La. There's a character, uh, Momoko. That was mm -hmm. really um, significant to me. You know, that was a transgender character. Uh, my son's transgender. So that was at a time that was, and then I got a nominated for, a, uh, for an anime award. Yeah, for that. So I was really proud of that piece. You got nominated but, for, from behind the voice actors or from whom? Uh, it was, an, uh, I was, I think it was through that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I go we'll like <laughs> my, my like resume Bible for me is going to Anime News Network to see, because it's like, that is so meticulous. You yes, know, everything. that's a great source mm -hmm. if you're not familiar. Super great source. And behind the voice actors as You well. want to keep that on tap, so like, so that way you know how to spell the character's <laughs> name <laughs> on something. <laughs> Did I answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm just, I get to blather. So <laughs> and forget to, what the question was. To track. <laughs> what else? Here are all the Baptists over here on this side, sitting all out of the way. <laughs> They're supposed to be in the back row. It's back row Baptist, or front row Baptist. Back row Baptist. Yes, non-cosplay, <laughs> Mr. Compress. How did you go back on Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and Oh. It is always a treat on yes. any of the games, or just, you know, even having gone through Super, just to get to re get to record that, to keep your characters, and it, that just have this life. You know? Yeah, it's amazing. They never get older. 
<laughs> <laughs> Unlike us, so it's, I, I love it. And we, you know, more, 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 more. More, 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 yes. Every, Especially that every franchise. Every voice actor's mm -hmm. motto, more, more, more. <laughs> yeah, what's your question? Your least favorite character. Oh, that's another put you on the spot. They're all your favorite, oh. right? <laughs> least favorite, but you know, qualify that. You know, what do you mean? Like, because. Like, Oh. Do you have one? You know one? what? I feel like because, I mean, you tend to voice things in your range, you know, for a reason. And I, I'm lucky that I get to go back and forth from villain, um, you know, to hero or just regular good guy, you know, the, the dads and stuff like that. I love the range that I get to play. Wow. You're going to have to go home and now you have homework. You have to go think about this. Maybe I can answer that on Twitter. I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I don't really a have a non-favorite. Ones that were more challenging and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that's over. But I don't want to say what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but you Ooh, know, you kind question. of bring up a good point. A lot of times actors do kind of get, and I hear this a lot, you're not supposed to get typecast as a voice actor, but many voice actors. I'm going to tell you, directors think of you in a certain way. Yeah, because I, I've now done like 60 voice actor interviews or something. They haven't all been released, but so many actors will say, oh, I got cast because I look like the character, or oh, I got cast because I'm a dad, or oh, I got cast because I'm a. So, so if you. I have can answer that okay, a different way, though, yeah. you know, as opposed to like characters, I, it's definitely, you know, like directors you enjoy working with or directors with whom you would rather never, 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 never work again. I've only walked out of a booth once. Really? Yeah. Because it was not a good session? Not a good session, not a good uh, rapport with the director, not worth it. Oh, interesting, and you have such good rapport with everyone. I, so I, I, I'm, I'm pretty mealy, but uh, you know, I can get along with most people. I do a lot of teaching, so I mean, like that's challenging in and of itself right there. You know, getting along with a lot of per young personalities. That's tough. Wow. Interesting. Good one. Yeah. Well, I like yeah. how the questions spur questions. They do, because now the there are hands begat everywhere. The question begat the question. What's your question? Hey. She's going to make us stop. Oh. Or make us actually use a microphone the Hi. proper way. So it turns out. Is that out what buttons are you for? You have to turn the microphone on. There's one button. There's one, one button. And it's green now, so and that says something. Yes. Have you not been able to hear us the whole time? I was lip reading the whole time. Ah. You, were lip <laughs> you were watching the flaps. <laughs> that's so funny. I saw you. Oh, oh, good. Oh, Indeed. yeah, that's your quirk. Yes, okay. Oh, my goodness. You can actually located hear us now. here on stage. Okay, we'll have to start this all over again. Thank you. <laughs> Are we still on you? Uh, no, now you can hear. Yeah. <laughs> You ask the same questions that some of us actors ask about our very characters, you know, because he is enigmatic, you know. We don't even get to see his eyes. You don't get to see much but just the, the, the body language that we get used to, you know, and that's the same thing for me. But hey, I had to ask at the very beginning, it's like, am I a good guy or a bad guy? Vanguard Action Squad, it sounds kind of ambiguous, you know, like, does he just think of himself in this way? Right, so I was wondering. I mean, Toga, I read, ooh. Might, like, get into, like, the bad team. Not the bad, like, okay, when you're first acting, you're the bad guy, but to attack a summer camp, that's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's commitment. <laughs> that is commitment. <laughs> yeah, well. Something I don't get to do in my day life. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. So I was going to let you, I didn't oh. want to choose out of turn, but I mean, he's. Yeah, he's, yes, what? If you had a quirk, what would it be? Ooh, that's. I'm sorry. Oh, if you time. had, a, that's a great one. If you had a quirk, what would it be? Uh, uh, that's hard. 
again, narrowing things down. I really love psychic type of powers, but I'm also about ice. I just feel like I would want some kind of a freeze thing, whether that meant Ooh. actually freezing somebody a moment or freezing time, something like that. I like a freeze thing. If you had a hero name, what would it be? Or a villain name, what would it be? Oh man, that's good. I feel like anything I choose is gonna sound like a Pokemon. <laughs> you know? Oh, okay, well, okay. We'll that's a good on. question. All right, we'll some good on ones. Food for thought, food for thought. Yeah, what's your question? Oh, oh, like you're surprised by the All lines. the time. <laughs> yeah? Yes. All the time? I mean, you know, Mr. Compress, for instance, you know, when there's, there's an explosion, I'm in the room, what's about to happen? <laughs> yeah. You know. But the thing is, we don't have the script. The script is all, once upon a time. Do you yeah. remember when the scripts once were upon paper? A time. I and do, everything actually. was recorded on reel to reel. Oops, now we got to go back. We run. I mean, it's, that was before QuickTime. That was before, you know, that everything was, you know, digital. And we actually had pages. Like, oh, we rewrote that line. Wait, actor, for 15 minutes while I run to this side of the building to the copy machine to redraft that. But yeah, I mean, looking ahead all the time. I mean, it hap it, it's happened to me on, um, do you know, show Radiant? Some, some say yes, yes some, some say no, say yes, you know, so it yes. happened on that. Even in, in I've asked ahead on, on Fruits Basket. Like, where's this going? <laughs> do I meet someone? You know? <laughs> <laughs> in one. real life or imagined, you know? <laughs> Ooh, a hero or a villain? What do you like better? I feel like mankind in general. <laughs> you know, we have some good, we have some bad. I feel like being able to go both. I don't. Maybe it's because I'm a Libra. I don't know. I like the balance. I don't know. Libras unite. I saw you in the back here. <laughs> <laughs> That a tough one? That is a that that's well, a tough one. Like I know well, in a way it's easy. I love both. Yeah. I mean it gets to afford you know, I mean, you get the both sides really well. So it's probably Thank you. Well, it's probably a compliment that you have the range where you can do both. You can be the villain and pull that part of your personality. You can be the hero and do you know, that. You and, can do character and, and on stage I tend to get roles that are more, you know, heroic or romantic and I don't always get to play somebody who is dastardly. You know, deliberately so. So you can do it in voiceover roles. Yeah. That's really well, I mean, cool. you know, Jerome was the first one, so I mean, like, got to be a bad guy. And then, then, you know, to answer your comment, I mean, like, did I just see him step on my head? <laughs> Is this the end of my voiceover career, voice acting <laughs> career? You know, to see the first death and like, and like, life after, life after Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Chuck Huber. <laughs> What else do we have? This has been an awesome panel, by it the way. Has. I love your questions, and Such I hope that I'm questions. answering satisfactorily. <laughs> to deliver. To deliver. Nothing else? Because we don't have much longer. So, oh, we don't at all. We have five more minutes. So if you've got a burning question, five minutes. I like how he got oh. his out of the way of like just cut right to the chase about, you know, becoming a voice, voice actor. Voice acting, <laughs> yes. That's such a good question, though. And since he it's teaches, a he was I a see great two. one. Yeah, I do, too. I saw your hand first. Out of the heroes. Yeah. Your oh, your favorite hero. You oh, mean, wait. like... Your favorite hero in My Hero Academia? Okay. In this series, in My Hero. I feel like that makes me... Then I want to choose the actor. Ooh, you know? Oh. I mean, like, I, I adore Cliff Chapin so much. You know, I feel like I... As a director, as a person, and as an actor, I mean, mm. like you know, I, that's a hard choice. That's not. That's not fair. Sure. <laughs> Say it again. The series, yeah, like. Is that hard too? That is hard. I don't like to pick. I'm not a very. I'm not very good at deciding. Oh. Like you know, that people say, hard. "What would you like for your birth?" I don't know. What flavor do you want? Mm, where do you want to go to eat? I am not a decider. Oh, no. Again, I think that's a Libra dinner. trait. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh. That is a Libra. I claim Libra trait. I, I'm not a Libra, and we I don't make decisions. You and I couldn't go to dinner. Well, We'd be like, I don't know. That's, I don't yeah, know. I, that's happened. That's happened. I married a Libra. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's happened. What's your question? How did you come up with a backstory for this? Oh, 
What backstory? I feel like something that happened to him, you know, like on a stage, something just like terrible that was embarrassing that made him want to shroud his face, mm. you know? And so like he's taking his revenge upon all of his audiences. That's kind of how I've reconciled it in my mind. Probably is coming nowhere close, but since you asked, you know. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Well, To guys, be able to get back to your, you know, ugh. revenge on the audience. That's a good backstory. I he like that it. man took it. You know that guy took a tomato in the face at some point, <laughs> or something. <laughs> you say ah, but I mean, look what happened. He turned, turned him. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's what it. That's what that is. <laughs> it's the drip. Oh, it's the egg that's coming down on his face. Oh. <laughs> Well, this has been so much fun. You are wonderful. This was a treat. And are you going straight to your table after this, or maybe in about five minutes? <laughs> no, that, that sounds like punishment. Straight oh. to your table. <laughs> Get back there, you actor. You will actor. go to your table. Yes. I am starvacious right now, so I am know oh. I'm going to find myself a little nosh You're... before I go back. Although I did gobble up that cake pop that they gave us. Oh, okay. Well, bit. he will be at his table. So if you have more yes. questions that didn't get asked, please. I love one-on-one -on -one interaction. I love yes. it. So please, you know, don't be scared. Just come and talk to me. Come and talk to him. <laughs> yeah. So after he has lunch, apparently, then you must go to your table. <laughs> Dad. Then, okay, well, thank you so much. Let's give Kent a round of applause. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you guys for coming, you know, plus ultra. Yes, oh, that's a great one to end on. You mm -hmm. wanna do a one, two, three, plus ultra, and then out of here, one, two, three, plus, plus ultra. ultra. <laughs>